So hello and welcome to another video from sickmaths.co.uk where you can find lots of free GCSE and A level maths videos. This one's about everything you need to know for the C4 module in short. And it's not just that, it's stuff that you'll find in the formula book but written in a more useful, more understandable way because some of the stuff they write in the formula book is uh, frankly deceptive or uh, so difficult to understand most people don't really get it unless they really study it or somebody's explained it to them so all this stuff is the stuff you need to know in the formula book and this stuff here is the stuff you need to learn or memorize but not only that I will also show you how you can avoid memorizing too much by being able to derive it from uh, this stuff here uh, in the formula book. So let's get on with it. For First of all, this stuff you need to know from the formula book. Um, binomial expansions, you get in the formula book 1 plus x to the power n instead of 1 plus ax to the power n. But the people, the examiners, really do expect you to convert x what they write x as ax. So they actually expect you to think about the what they've written as I've written, if that makes any sense. So uh, they expect you to think about 1 plus ax to the power n even though they just wrote 1 plus x to the power n. Uh, because whenever you use a question in, the form, uh, in C4, do a question in C4, it's always 1 plus something x to the power n. It's never 1 plus x to the power n. Um, so that's the idea behind that and also they make this a little bit difficult to understand they don't write this I write this because they write something in set theory which I um, don't think everybody fully understands basically the power n can if the power n is either a number less than one or even negative or it's a fraction then this whole expansion is only valid if ax or the modulus of ax is less than one i.e. AX is either anything from 1 to minus 1. That's what it means to be uh, less than the modulus of AX is less than 1. So that's set theory, uh, not set theory explained, binomial expansion explained. Uh, then there's trapezium rule, which I don't really go into uh, when it comes to integration because you should know that's related to integration, the area under the graph. Uh, and I wrote that in a slightly different way. It's than the usual, uh, where instead of writing h over 2, I got w over 2 because when they say h in the formula book, they're talking about the width of the trapeziums, which is a bit, which is a bit strange, isn't it? Why use h when you should really be using w for width? Okay, so that's that. That's the trapezium rule. I don't really want to go into that because you should have known that from C2, and hopefully when I get to writing my C2 book, I'll go into that. Into that with more detail but uh, very briefly what's going on is the area of the trapezium is equal to sorry area under the graph which is accurately done with um, integration it can be estimated by using the trapezium rule uh, which basically says the area of trapeziums fitted under a graph it roughly estimates the area under the graph um, so where W is the width of the trapeziums, they purposely keep all the widths of the trapeziums the same and the Y values are the heights of its sides. And uh, if you try to add up all the trapeziums, basically you would factorise or summarise to that. Let's move on to things in the C3 part of the formula book. Uh, you've got these two very important formulas, sine A plus B equals that stuff and cos A plus B equals that stuff and uh, that's very useful for deriving these two formulas, 7, 8, 7 and 8 I should say. For example, if I replace A and B with X plus X I get uh, sine 2x is equal to sine x cos x plus sine x cos x, which is simply 2 sine x cos x. And also, in a similar way, if I replace the a plus b again with x's, so x plus x makes it 2x, so cos 2x is equal to cos x cos x minus sine x sine x, which is simply cos squared x minus sine squared x. Which actually leads on to these very important identities, which is if I replace, for example, the sine squared x with a 1 minus cos squared x from here, so move that cos squared x to the other side, you get sine squared x equals 1 minus cos squared x. Okay, I get this formula. 
And if I instead of doing that, I replace the cos squared x with 1 minus sine squared x, again just by rearranging that, okay, I get 1 minus 2 sine squared x. So, uh, cos 2x equals that, 2 cos squared x minus 1, and cos 2x equals 1 minus 2 sine squared x, as well as being equal to that, or identical to that, I should say, because it's got a triple line there. Um, so that's that explained. And these differentials are really useful. So it says tan x is differential differentiated to make sun uh, sec x. Therefore, you can use it into use it in the integration part of the C4 module uh, and say, well, sec x integrates to tan x and minus cos x squared integrates to cot x. Uh, in a similar way, uh, integral of cos x squared equals minus cot x. So it's just like moving the minus to the other side. If this side doesn't have the minus, that side will. Of course you have to add a c uh, when you integrate anything. Um, but not only that, again, in the formula book they make it look really difficult. They write tan kx differentiates to k sec kx, which is a bit odd, which is fine in a way because they're just telling you how to use a chain rule, but why do they only do it for one of these? They don't do it for the rest of them. So I've just basically left out the k and make it more sensible where you're simply doing a straightforward differentiation and not suddenly doing chain rule for one of them which makes it look a bit weird or complicated and this is there's nothing really to write explain here I've all, I will explain it when it comes to the integration part of the C4 module it's just the what we call integration by parts so I won't go into that. Anyway, let's whiz through the stuff you have to memorize. Uh, we've gone through a bit of it already, but um, over here. Anyway, uh, first of all, the stuff for vectors. Uh, a vector equation of a line starts from a position vector plus uh, lambda times the direction vector, which is kind of common sense if you want to make a line, but I'm not going to go into it too much. Basically, you have a starting point and then you go off in a certain direction forever in that direction. That will obviously create a straight line, and a very specific straight line, because it starts from any point you want and any direction you want. Okay, and That's the straight line. This is the only formula you really have to memorize. That's not quite a formula, is it? That's just a format of writing a line. But this is the only formula you really have to know that is new to vectors or to you um, for vectors in a C4 module. This stuff here, although it's a formula, it's actually just uh, Pythagoras. All it's saying is, if you realize that the way they use vectors in C4 is just like the uh, the i-axis is just like the x-axis and the j-axis is just like the y-axis. I should say i-vector is like the x i x axis etc. and the k-vector is just used like the z-axis, then this is just simply Pythagoras in 3D. Um, so if you know your Pythagoras you would have realized that. Um, this is a small, so this vector's finished, this is partial fractions, all I'm saying here is if you've got some random function um, you, and this function is uh, not a top heavy fraction, I don't want to make it over complicated, then um, for every factor on the bottom you get a fraction, you, you can break into a partial fraction. If you've got a squared um, factor on the bottom for the denominator, that actually creates two fractions, two partial fractions. So uh, 1x minus b and 1x minus b all squared. Uh, so that's that explained partial fractions very simple then these are really old things you should know identities you should know you should know this from your C2 days yeah um, in fact uh, I think this was useful for C1 that's C2 isn't it but it doesn't matter you have to know it either way we talked about 7 and 8 already and uh, this you should have known from the C3 module it's not in the C3 part of the formula book but you're supposed to know this and that's easily derived by the way from this stuff here yeah, for example if you divide everything by cos squared x you get this one here and rearrange it a bit uh, similar idea with this as well this can be derived from that um, a combination of those two, I should say. These two can be derived from a combination of these two. Um, 
What else? You got more differentials, the ones that you don't know, but they're very useful because you have to not just differentiate, you have to integrate as well using these. So that's this table 11, very useful. There's a product rule there, how to differentiate sine and cos, how to differentiate ln. Uh, ln of a function is differentiated by simply taking this function find a differential of it and basically it creates a, a fraction yeah so ln of fx is the differential of fx on top of itself so if this was 3x the ln of 3x would be differential of 3x is 3 so it's 3 over 3x which is actually just 1 over x but anyway um, yeah, and if you want variations of that, like if you had e, e to the power 5x, how do you differentiate that? You need to use chain rule on top of that idea. Um, you've got 12 and 13. What's 12 all about? That's the how to integrate something that's in parametric form. Very simple little trick, because dx is equal to dx by dt by times by dt, because these two dt's cancel and you get dx and how to differentiate something in parametric form you find you just do dy by dt divided by dx by dt because then this this one flips upside down and the dt's cancel gives you dy by dx and uh, what else is there there's the old logarithms that you need to know you just need to know these three there are other things that you might think you need to know like for example you might think what about the rest of the, the um, binary expansion stuff you know what does uh, there's loads of stuff they explain in the C2 part of the formula but you don't need to know those things you just need to know this much yeah, this is everything you need to know. Hopefully you understand all these logarithm rules. And that's all you need to know. You don't need to know logs in too much detail. They just touch on them. And that's all I've got to say.